we have made our journey through Lent and to Easter. We've gone from a new Lord is our hope and we'll never hope in vain to Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then, of course, the Lord is risen indeed. Yet, the environment in which we have walked this walk and along with Christ has been in the dark. The darkness of this pandemic, of not understanding, of not knowing what to do, of not knowing how long it will go on, and, and the very real death toll um, and financial toll that it's taking those who don't get sick and die may still suffer all kinds of consequences because they've lost jobs, sources of income. It is a sad and dark time. All the same, even at the grave, we offer up our Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Because Christ has done this, Christ has gone before. One of the things that um, I really enjoy about scripture, and I take it as grace from God, that when I discover something I hadn't seen before. Um, and this week, preparing for Easter, I noticed something about Matthew's gospel that is different. Um, Matthew is the only gospel in which the tomb is not already opened. John, Mark, Luke, everybody has the women coming uh, to anoint Jesus' body or to see the tomb as I think he, Matthew puts it. Uh, and they get there and the door is open. Even those women who come and they say, oh, who's gonna roll the tomb away, uh, the door to the tomb? From us. So there's sort of a focus on that door. And in Matthew's gospel, though, there's, there's this kind of neat thing that I think was important to notice. And that is that as the women arrive in the dark, an angel appears like lightning, frighteningly so, and the, the angel opens the door to the tomb and the women are frightened, and he says, don't be afraid. But there are guards at the tomb, and the guards are so frightened that they pass out. <laughs> but the women stay strong. And the angel says, I know who you're looking for. He's not here. He's risen. And he invites them, almost casually, uh, to take a look in the tomb. You'll see he's not here. And to sort of, I don't know, kind of make more clear the casualness and the take it for grantedness of the angel, his insouciance, he just he sits himself on the door that has been opened and waits for the women to see that he tells them the truth. Now that's good news for me in this dark time in a couple of ways. And so were both gospels that we, we could have read for today, yesterday, for Easter Sunday. Um <clears throat> One is that there's always something new with God, whether it's just something that I have overlooked in my reading or it's something that I notice in my living that I just hadn't noticed before. And that's how God is. Unless we remember to look for God, to look for things that we don't expect, it's hard for us to allow them into our consciousness. And at the same time, and at the same time, we have this image, too, of Mary, Mary, um, holding on to Jesus' body as he finally makes an appearance. And at least in Matthew's gospel, where he says, or John's gospel, he says, let me, let me go. Um, and I think that's, that's another word for us that's important, that things aren't going to be the same for us living in America now, living in the world now, after the coronavirus any more than things were the same for Mary and the, di the first disciples, any more than it was for Jesus in resurrection life. Things are changed. And I think Christ would have us have the courage he wanted Mary to have and to let go, let the change be, give into it. Look for God to show up where God wants to show up in our lives and keep looking for that. Look for the light even in the darkness which is what Mary did. She did the, the right thing. She went and loved him with her friend, the other Mary. And as she did it, she found light in the darkness. 
the light that can never be put out. Even so, Christ Jesus, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you for listening.